What's up, Rams, and welcome back to your favorite part of the Thursday night show, Cam's Corner. I'm your host, Cameron Ebig. CSU football is coming up two very disappointing losses in a row, but no matter the record of both sides, the matchup this weekend always means just a little bit more to the squad and their fans. I'll preview this year's Border War, set for Saturday. Plus, the Rams' most promising program is set to officially kick off their season Tuesday against a Sweet 16 team from last year. CSU Hoops is finally back. All that and more on Cam's Corner, starting right now. Fourteen to seven against Vanderbilt. Fourteen to seven at Iowa. And sixteen to seven at home versus Boise State. These are all halftime leads that Colorado State had earned this season that eventually resulted in a loss. Meaning three out of the five CSULs this year have come after holding an advantage at the intermission. Being a Ram fan is a lot like loving the Broncos. They have a lot of potential. They get your hopes up. And then they break your heart in the worst way. But what can make up for all that heartbreak? A dub. And besides beating the Buffs, there's no better victory for this program than the one against its border rivals to the north, Wyoming. With that in mind, the Rams travel to Laramie this weekend to play the Cowboys on 1.30 on Saturday afternoon for the 113th Border War. The battle for the bronze boot is always one of Colorado State's most anticipated games, and this year is no different. As I brushed upon earlier, CSU comes out into this one off another crushing L, this time at Kansas Stadium, Canvas Stadium to Boise State. But like I mentioned, this team has a lot of potential. Thompson Teo is playing so much better, and Trey McBride has just been announced as a finalist for the John Mackey Award, which is given to the best tight end in college football. And at times, David Bailey has really looked like a true RB1. So, what's the issue then? Now, I really want to keep roasting Steve Adazio so badly. But unfortunately, I don't have time this week. So, let's focus on the red zone offense instead. Hey, although I love my boy Caden Campers having an incredible year kicking for the Rams, it's not necessarily a good thing that he leads the entire nation in field goals per game. Now, it does mean we're getting three points on the board consistently, but it also means we're failing inside the 20 way too often. Adazio set it for four short field goals against Boise and, and the struggle in the red zone with the best tight end in the country is interesting, to say the least. Trey McBride only has one touchdown this year. One! For a guy that doesn't drop anything, it seems like getting more than a single end zone completion shouldn't be this difficult. And while David Bailey has been a force, eight passing touchdowns in eight games is not going to cut it. Whatever. And after all that, let's look at the, op the opposition, the Cowboys. They had an impressive start to their season, 4-0, but quickly had a reality check when conference play started. Going winless since, including a really bad loss to New Mexico at home. Wyoming hasn't exactly given their fans too much to be excited through this rough patch, but their silver lining has to be running back Xavier Valade. This senior ran for 172 yards against Fresno State two weeks ago, also always bringing that explosiveness as a runner. But still, stacking the box against this UW team should completely shut down this otherwise very poor offense. Look, if CSU loses this game, Steve Adagio should start questioning his job security, plain and simple. And, Ram fans, it looks like that's all the time I've got for you today. But stick around, as we got all entertainment news right after this. <laughs> 